Blog Talk Radio. Hello from the other side. Now presenting. Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm sorry about our little hiatus last week, but uh, we missed you guys, so we decided to come back. Um, That's right. <laughs> large, large and in charge. I want to thank LiveParanormal.com for letting us host this uh, this radio show, and I hope it really brings you guys a lot of enlightenment. Eric is my 21, uh, 20 year old, eternally 20 year old um, son who is now in the spirit world, and he acts as a spirit guide. So hopefully he's going to help you guys navigate your way through the human experience. Hi, Eric. Hi, Kim. That is right, you guys. Hello, hello. Eric says, hey, Mom, what's up? He's real, feeling real Not lighthearted. Not much. He's, he's been real high-pitched in his voice all day, so it's like he, he's very um, – it's interesting how different he can be from – or how differently I perceive him from one day to the next in the subject matter that we talk about and how that um how he changes in a, in accordance to that. So he's here and he's ready to talk to you guys and help you guys continue the topic we've been talking about and that's relationships. And and so, needless to say I uh, Kim is his spirit translator and we'll talk more about her later. But uh, in this third of his series on relationships, Eric will Eric will talk about how to nurture a relationship. I want you to find that it, it is the one that will enrich your life and help you grow, rather than tear you down or rob you of your emotional resources. You, you guys know those kind of relationships, the ones that rob you of everything emotional. So let's start out with that, and then we'll go ahead and take callers afterwards. All right. So Eric, take it away, buddy. I love you. Right, that's right, that sounds good. He says, I love you too, Mom. And don't forget, guys, we will break every 15 minutes or so for station identification because we couldn't be here without LiveParanormal.com. So here we go. Um, if you guys are having issues in your relationship and, you're fig- in, and you know you want to continue this certain relationship, whether it's a friendship, romantic relationship, whatever, um, Eric's going to give you guys tips on how to nurture it to strengthen it. Um, and there's a few key a few key elements he wants you guys to write down, and then he's going to break down each one of those. So first he says, he said, um, he said, get your shit out, meaning like a pen and paper, pencil and paper. I don't care what you write with. I don't care what no. you take notes with. He says, but he's making a list. Um, so the first the first thing he says you need to write down is devotion, and then he actually puts a question mark behind it. So he says, you guys need to ask yourself, first of all, am I devoted to this relationship? Am I devoted to making it work and nourishing it? Or am I ready to cut ties? Because if you're not sure, then you're not ready to work on nurturing it. So you have to answer, you have to look at that aspect first. You have to look at and be able to answer that question to yourself first. So figure that out, he says. (laughs) He's like, now step two. Okay. Am I willing to change my perspective? Am I willing to surrender my thoughts, my perspective, and even my opinions? Because, um, (laughs) oh gosh, he's funny. Um, But anyway, if you are, then you can move on to step three. He says, if you're not, then you need to wait until you're ready. So it's like, these are some, like, um, these checks that you need to go through to, to even show if you're ready to nurture something. If you can give up your perspective and, and shift and try to see something from someone else's point of view, see the relationship from their point of view, then you're in a better place to work with it and nurture it and cultivate love and compassion. If not, if you're still stuck on me and i got to prove my point and that I'm right and all of that, then um, you're always going to have or, or experience that animosity. So step three, that's that's the part, that's the, <laughs> he says, that's the mean potatoes. Um, so this is, this is um, nourishment. How do you nourish a relationship? Um, now, if you've given the green light to the other two, now you're ready, now you know you're ready to nourish. So the ways that you do that are what I just told you. He said, shift your perspective and start to see 
let's say, for example, we're talking about a romantic relationship, husband and wife, and they're having such a hard time getting along. It's been toxic for a while, but they both have decided, yes, I'm devoted. Yes, I'm willing to shift my perspective and, and try to see things from the other person's point of view. What can I do? What do I know they need to to nourish this, to nurture it and make it work? So um, now's the time to put those those things in action. Um, shift and and look at the relationship from the other person's point of view. Because if you're willing to do that, then you're going to learn. It's sort of like um, like he's, he's using image, so I got to get him to use words. It's like it's like putting two magnets together and finding out like that the magnetic field that they both resonate at to to be attracted to each other, right? And he's talking about magnets. So same thing with people. You have to figure out what your partner or what your person in this relationship is attracted to, and you have to begin to speak through that channel. So let's say. Let's say in a relationship, for example, um, your partner really responds to quality time, but you really respond to like, um, uh, so your partner responds to quality time and that's what they need to feel like the relationship is being nourished. But you are someone who likes gifts, like let's say gifts or, I mean, something to that effect, like um, more Diamonds, like baby. Gestures. Yeah, more of like like gestures like that to show appreciation. Then you guys have to begin to work in in that area. If your partner needs quality time, you're going to have to nurture that aspect, that element, um, and and vice versa. If you're someone you know who needs um, those kinds of gestures and surprises and whatever, then your uh, your partner is going to have to realize that they've got to speak to you and and um, give energy to that side of the relationship. But when we get so stuck on, this is what I need and this is what I want you to do, but we're not willing to budge for them, then nothing works. So if it's like, yep, I need need you to do this, I need you to to do that, but you're not willing to match that energetically in your efforts to to nourish it and nurture the relationship, then it's never going to work. Like it's going to be a give and take relationship. Either, you know, one's always giving, the other's always taking. You both have to do, through devotion, um, what the other one needs. And if, you, if you're not willing to, to give up, um, like, your capitalization, like capitalizing on what you need, if you're not willing to shift, then you're not ready. So, and, and if that pisses you off, he says, then you're not ready, like, well, your partner, your partner says, "Well, I need this. You know, I, I really want you to, you know, maybe it's be more intimate." And you're like, "Well, I want you to be more um, intellectual with me." And if neither one of you are willing to budge, you're going to stay there until one of you changes. But it takes devotion. If if you're not devoted, um, you're going to find yourself right back in this spot. So same thing. You know, with I, like I understand that that a relationship is never fifty fifty all the time. That Sometimes it's, you know, 48%, uh, oh, God, don't make me do the math, 52%, and, you know, but it, it always shifts. So there are some times in a relationship's life that one partner gives more than the other and then vice versa. That's right, Mom, he says. And sometimes you see, um, especially in this day and age, he says, people get so wrapped up with themselves and their identity that they really forget to step away from that for a minute and speak to and do to, meaning like gestures, towards their partner that they know their partner is going to respond to. If, in, in other words, if you, he says, if you do something for your partner that, here's a perfect example. I'll just use me and my husband. My husband, like the, the work that I do and my love for crystals, all of that could not be more foreign to him, but he's supportive. Uh-huh. You know? So if I were to come home and be like, here, babe, I bought you this magnificent crystal. Look, don't you like it? He would be like, great, you bought a rock. You know, he would. So, but rather <laughs> if I came home and I'm like, look, babe, I bought you this brand new pistol. Isn't this great? You know, he's a gun collector. So he would be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. So I had this 
I have to do these gestures or um, communicate to him on his level. Like you have to be willing to adjust because if you're if you're that rigid, um, you're only going to experience things in accordance to your likeness. So if you do for others and your friendship accordance to your likeness, then um, the appreciation or even the understanding of it and cultivating nourishment from it in a relationship uh, may not be effective. So you have to understand what's going to be effective and what the other person is going to respond to. So again, like if it's your mom and you have a shitty relationship, he says, with your mom. Or, and, you know, maybe it's because he's actually using a client as an example. Maybe your mom's an alcoholic and maybe you have a, a bad relationship with her because of it. But you really want to talk to her. So maybe you go over and you, you talk to her about, you know, and maybe that's your foot in, is um, booze. He says, maybe you bring, like, let's share a glass of wine and let's talk. You have to you have to navigate that way in order to make a connection because black's going to stay black, white's going to stay white until, you know, they choose to, to soften a little bit and mend and blend. Um Otherwise, it's it's going to be black and white all the time. And if that's the case, that's when you see people separate. That's when you see people become estranged. Um, and then, of course, that leads to illness because it's like there's no closure. Um, people become yeah. poisoned from that. Um, yeah. But if you're not willing to give up and sacrifice a little bit of your disposition in it, you're going to keep yourself stuck. You're going to keep yourself even defined by the um, the stagnancy, like the ways that it's not working, it's not working. It's going to be what it, a wise friend once told me, and Eric is reminding you guys, um, it is what it is until it's different. So it's up to you to make it different. Mm. Keep trying yeah. the same things over and over. It's going to it's be not the same work. thing over and over. Yeah. <laughs> um, Definition of insanity. Exactly. You can't cure insanity, Mom, he says, with insanity. No. If, if you focus on it and focus on it, then it, it's not going to change. So he also says um, that's that's another key thing right there, change. Um, just in another way, he's explaining if, if you're not willing to change, if you're not willing to adapt or try something new, it'll never It'll never, you'll never um, be able to reach that stage of nourishment. Now, when he says, now when you reach that stage and you see something being effective, um, communication is key, Mom. He says, people don't do that anymore. People don't communicate. And so let's say you do some sort of gesture, maybe your partner really needs quality time, so you book a little weekend getaway. And you're thrilled. You're like, I can't believe my partner booked this getaway. Well, that's great, but he says you have to communicate that back to your partner that you really appreciate it, that it means something to you, that it works, you know, because that communication is key. If you don't say anything and there's no appreciation, how do you expect anything to work? <laughs> he says um, communication is the foundation for success. So especially in any kind of relationship, you can't expect the other to know what you're thinking or know what you're feeling. So Make sure when you guys try different things, communicate. I don't think that really worked. Or, yeah, that was amazing. We should do that all the time. You know, whatever it is, you have to communicate. Um, he says when you when you look at the statistics, he's getting into statistics. He says when you look at the statistics of failed relationships and the ones that, oh, that God. Work, the ones that do work, um, the most common denominator is the two things. Unwillingness to change something. Um, oh, yeah. And, um, like, unwillingness to change. And then uh, sort of like that, that egoic mindset, like believing that my way is the right way. And that's that's most of the time the reason why people won't change or don't change because they think they're right. Well, that's like the, the, uh, that's like the same as unwillingness to uh, to change. What about a lack of communication? That should be a biggie too. Right, right. And and then mom, he says when you when you look at this, it's it's like the lack of communication leads to misunderstanding, leads to mm. um, further 
um, non-communication leads to, you know, separation. So Yes, and, and I will say this. One thing that, that that is very important in communication is acknowledgement. If somebody keeps going on and on and droning on and on about this and that, whether they're unhappy with this and the rest, et cetera, it's because they probably don't feel acknowledged, okay? That's what makes people go on and on. So acknowledging their That's feelings, true. acknowledging their situation is super important in a relationship. That's so true. And that's kind of, you know, energetically where Eric's coming from, too, when he's talking about, you know, recognizing what the person in the relationship needs, like acknowledging their needs and being being willing, you know, devoted to to fulfilling that for them. That's that's what it a partnership is a team. It's a teamwork. It's a team effort. And if you're not willing to work as a team, then you shouldn't be He's more talking about marriage right now, but he says if you're not willing to work as a team, then you probably shouldn't be married <laughs> or dating or any of that. So you have or to understand. Friend. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a, it's teamwork. And he says um, he could get into talking about attachments, but he's like, I don't want to right now. <laughs> but it, there's a whole okay. other element of attachments, too, because people become attached to their expectations of that relationship. And so he says... For you guys, understand the importance of communicating and making sure, like, um, you understand your partner and your partner understands you or your friend or your mom or whoever because um, that's half the battle is is communicating. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, if you're willing enough to to be devoted and show devotion through your actions and willing to change perspectives and like okay I'm going to I'm going to see things through you know your perspective I'm really going to make a solid effort to see why you'd be upset if I do this or you know and if you're willing to do that then you're already putting your place in a more vulnerable position um I don't know if vulnerable is the right word but a more Coherent? I don't know. Um, nope, that's not it either. Cohesive? Maybe that's Tell her, word. Eric. Give her a word. Throw her, her a word out there. I think cohesive is it. Like um, Cohesive, okay. Where, where you be, you become more like tandem with your partner, with your friend. And, right, and right. And you guys work in sync with each other, and um, again, it doesn't have to be to your likeness. If you can work to their likeness, you've got it made. But that's what it takes. It takes that sacrifice, that compromise. Because, again, if you're, like, if I were to come home and bring my husband a crystal, it's like a, a foreign language to him. He's like, huh? Yeah. But if that's I speak so his language, I'm like, check this out, babe. You know, I got you a new um, plow for your tractor or a new <laughs> pistol to add to your collection. Like, that's his language. That's that's what he knows that that I'm showing the way that I care because I'm acknowledging his likes, you know, the things that you know, make him right. feel Right, his alive. world. You need to be a part of his world. We right. need to be a part of each other's world. That's what helps create connections. Right, and and don't get don't get caught up, he says, in thinking that, like, it has to be things because, you know, f- same scenario, my husband and I, he's a farmer. Um, it For him, it would mean even more if I just went down and, like, bailed hay with him and, like, drove the tractor or something. Oh, um, that so sounds it's like fun. That, that time, like, okay, you're getting in my world now. Like, you're 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 coming into my world, and so showing that willingness, you know, that devotion. Yeah. Um, so you got to be willing to to go into the other person's world, and um, like sort of submerge, immerse yourself into that to show your devotion, and that's what is going to sort of soften their walls. To say, oh, okay, you know this. They're really trying. They're really going to make this work. You know, I can try yeah. too. So, but it has to be mutual because if you try and try and try and Always. someone else doesn't and they just take, you got to realize, you got to, like, know when to set the boundaries, he says, and say, like, all right, now I'm trying and it's at my own expense and it's not going anywhere. you got to know when to draw the line. Exactly. So I hope that helps you guys. And, and as you guys look at the relationships that you're in and maybe where you feel like this tug of war is back and forth, maybe just try to completely let go of your own um, 
your own point of view, your own perspective, and just try to see it from their point of view, from their perspective and what might be going through their head. And I think if you can, you might even find new ways, and he says new ideas, to approach the relationship, new things to try, um, if you can shift perspectives. So it might take beating are, down the ego a little bit. That's true. That's what it takes to let go of your own ego to get into someone else's point of view. Um, that's right. And, to, and, and capitalizing on it. He keeps using the word like capitalizing on your own likes and thinking like that's the, bright, the right way, the best way. When you can stop thinking like that, then you're, you're creating space. You're making way for that other person to have a root, have space in your life. And, again, I'll use That's myself right. as an example. Like, you know, when I just plug away and I work on, on my blog or on, you know, private sessions or whatever i got going on, you know, sometimes I do get so bogged down with my work that I forget to let my husband have space in my life. And i got to just shut it down and, like, you know, go do whatever with him. Because sure, if I don't give sure. him that room, you know, and vice versa. You know, he would be gone for so long farming. And, like, I feel like, you know, I'm not even in your world sometimes. I feel like I'm not even a part yeah. of your life. So then we, we have to come back to that common ground and say, okay, we have to recreate that space for the other person to have space in our life and in our world. And if you always hold that space, then um, then you'll be productive. Or, yeah, um, you, you'll really be successful in achieving um, a strong connection, and that's what it's about, he says. That's right. So, All right, that's awesome, Eric. Kim, thank you so much. I yeah, think we're ready to take course. callers. What do you think, Eric? He's, he's like, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, so only one question per person, please, because we want to get on uh, get as many listeners as we can to talk to Eric. So here we have one from a looks like a foreign area code. Hi there, can you hear me? Hello, hi, I can hear you. Yes. Hi, how are you doing? This is Elisa. Welcome to the show. Hi, this is. Thank you. This is Mario calling from Barcelona. Well, actually, I'm the, in the Canary Islands now. Anyway, oh, but I live oh, in wow. Barcelona. Well, anyway, yeah, I wanna. I wanted to ask a question. It's not actually for me. Oh, and I wanted to thank you for making us, the three of you, for making us happier. Anyway, uh, it's not a question thank for you. me. It's actually a question. It's a question that I always, that I had for the longest time. But before I wanted to, to remind Eric to please help me with uh, opening my third eye. But here's my question. Okay, what happens energe- energe- energetically speaking when you see for example, a performance of a film from an actor that has transitioned or get, um, gets a reaction from the viewer, like a laugh or a cry, or you hear a song from a singer that is no longer in this plane and, and has the same effect, or even read a book that moves you uh, from, the, from an author that is, that is now where Eric lives. And mm. are they, are, do they receive our do we get Do they receive our vibes from, from us, or... Are they around us when, when we read, watch them, or hear them? That's it. What a great question. Oh, what, a cool, what do you think, Eric? What a cool question. Um, and I have a quick little sh- a story that I'll share on this real quick, too. So um, this is what Eric is saying first to answer your question. Um, he says that, okay, let's say you're watching a movie of someone who's deceased or you're reading a book of an author who's deceased. Um, the reaction you have is caused, there's an energy imprint, you know, to get right down to it, there's an energy imprint Mm. from anybody involved. Um, It's a vibrational imprint that can't be otherwise. You know, that person, that energy was a part of that creation. Now you're experiencing it. So it's a, it's a, um, he's showing like connect the dots. Okay. So, and they all make it, they create a circle. So, the energy you're watching, you know, is created or associated with a certain person. And now that energy affects you, and then because you are affected energy, then that sort of um, triggers, like, almost a response from the person that is, um, like, responsible for whatever it is that you're affected by. So, yes, they're aware. We are aware. So when you read my book, he 
says, like wink, wink, <laughs> because he's a part of it. He, <laughs> his energy is imprinted. Um, he's aware when you have a reaction to his book. Um, okay. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Here's a quick little story I have to share on that that's funny. If you guys know me at all, you know that I'm extremely ignorant to, like, actors and um, – TV shows and, and films and all that stuff. Um, so I was recently in California last month. Went to the, the Walk of Fame with my mom, and we're walking, and I walk over a star that says Catherine Hepburn. And my mom's like, oh, my God, we got to stop and take a picture. And I'm like, huh? And she's like, don't you know who Catherine Hepburn was? And I'm like, no, I've never heard of her. And whatever. So I just walking. Yes, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to admit because now I've done my research. I've heard of Audrey Hepburn but never Catherine. So to make a long story short, I didn't remember that. I was so like, yeah, whatever, so out of it, I didn't remember. Um, anyway, a couple nights ago, here at home, I was up till like wow. midnight, couldn't sleep, and I rolled over, and I had just asked for guidance for a project I'm working on. I rolled over, and I see this beautiful woman like hovering over my bed. I'm like, oh, my God, hi. She was very beautiful, and she told me her name was Kathy. And I'm like, okay, so who are you? What are you here for? She was giving me guidance on my project. And I'm like, okay, so she said she was a famous actress in the, the 20s, 30s, 40s, like that era. And I'm like, okay, so anything mm-hmm. else you can give me to identify? This is just so wild. This shows you, I'll, I promise I'll connect the dots here in just a second. So I'm like, okay, anything else? And she says, Tom. And I'm like, okay. So I, she says, Google me. You'll, find, you'll figure it out. So I Googled famous actress named Kathy because she said, just call me Kathy. Um mm. And her personality was really gruff, and I noticed that. I was like, boy, she's really oh, yeah. you know, gruff, and it was weird. And so um, I, I Googled famous actress named Kathy in the 20s, and I was scrolling and scrolling, and, I came, and then I stopped on this picture, and I was like, oh, my God, that's her. That's you. And Cool. So long story short, she even gave me the name Tom. I said, you know, anything else to identify yourself? She said Tom. Come to find out that was her brother that she found dead after he died. So anyway, the whole reason why I'm telling you this is because I had a reaction to her star. Like, I stopped and looked at it. I was like, no, I I don't know who she is. But she was there at that point in time. Her energy left an imprint. And I connected for a moment, but I I mean, nothing. You know, I was just like, hmm, I feel kind of bad. I feel like I'm Hmm. supposed to know who this is because my mom made such a big deal out of it. And and then later she came through, kind of laughing. And then That's it was even amazing. noted. It was even noted that she was known for her gruff attitude. So That's don't right. ever hesitate. Right. That no matter you know everything's connected. And it when you really realize the depth of that, it's very overwhelming. So when you're reading stuff and when you're watching you know films and things, know that because they you're affected by it, whatever it is. They're there. They're a part of it. It's it's um, automatic. So Eric oh, yeah. says, um, don't even hesitate to take it a step further. And like, okay, I watched your film. This is cool. What else can you share about yourself? You know, because they're always willing to talk. It's this yep, channel them. Matter. Channel them, yes. Yeah. Yep, and that's what he said well. when you said, can he help open my third eye? He said, dude, it's already open. Everybody's third eye is already open, but your awareness might not be there. So... Okay. Place your awareness there. Focus your awareness on, you know, these quick flash images that you see. Um, if you start, like, randomly seeing things in your head, like images, um, and you're like, I don't know why I just pictured that. Well, sometimes you didn't just picture it. Sometimes spirit came in and gave you that image. It sent it to you. Yeah, right. Right, right. So the first thing to get rid of, he says, is the thought that your third eye is not open. He's like, dude, it's open. Just, Just focus your awareness there. Focus on... Mario, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. You're so welcome. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a good night. Bye. You too. You too. And I want to, again, thank uh, LiveParanormal.com for giving us this venue. We couldn't do this, guys. We could not have you guys talking to Eric and listening to Eric and sharing enlightenment between each other. If if it were not for them, so I really want to express my gratitude. Um, Kim, were you going to say something? Right. Nope, I was going to say that's right. If it wasn't for LiveParanormal.com, we wouldn't be able to bring Eric to you guys the way we do. 
So keep your questions right. coming and show them some love, you guys. LiveParanormal.com. All right. Let's take somebody from the 814 area code. Hi there. Welcome to the show. Would that be me? That you? It would Hello. be you. Hi. How are you doing? Wow, that's great. Thanks. I'm doing good. How are you? We're doing great. I don't so have a relationship question. I don't have a relationship question. Is no, that okay? It have to be. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. okay. What's your first okay, name? Okay, here's the only thing I have a question about is like a ringing. I, I've never had this ringing, and it's I've narrowed it down to it's not the physical ears. So I'm trying to determine what is causing the ringing. Is it spirit and what's coming your through? First name? What Ed. is your first name? Ed. Okay, Ed. So what do you think, yeah. Eric? What is this ringing in his ears? Or his head? Or or head, yeah. Or spirit. Yeah, yeah. he says, He says, Mom, you know the answer to this. <laughs> it's, no, I um, don't. He says, when, when, okay, so it's not just about what or who is around spiritually, but it has a lot to do with you and you your vibration and what your vibration is doing in accordance to who's around you. Um, who, you know, being spirit and vibration. So, okay, here's a couple of examples. Um, when you experience this ringing sensation, generally what's happening, he says, is you're responding to a shift in, like, the electromagnetic field around you. And your body's responding and picking up on the shift or a change by hearing like a ringing. Um, sometimes you might sound, it might sound like a low, dull um, tone or like a muffled sound, but it's a couple of things are happening. You know, um, you can't help but be affected by what's around you on, an, on a vibrational level. So um, when spirit comes in close by, or even if you're near a lot of electronics, um, they're going to have a certain electromagnetic field that they're putting off, and it's going to affect you one way or another, you know. So when you hear this ringing, um, I know for me personally when I hear that, that's Spirit's way of coming in and saying, hey, I'm here, let's talk. And I, that's when I tune in. I'm like, okay, who is this? So it's And it's kind of a symbol that I've developed that they have to do to get my awareness. So when you hear that, he says, first of all, stop and be... Oh, go ahead. How would I pinpoint either to bring it in or to block it out totally? Because well, it's it really annoying. Saying, it, it it can be, and it sometimes is so piercing it's uncomfortable. But he says, "Oh um, gosh, here's here's yeah, because it's such a high frequency. Um, here's mm. a couple things. He says, start to pay attention to the patterns. If it's a certain time of day, a certain area, like a, a certain room in your home or at work or something." Starting to pay attention to see if you can pick up on the patterns. So because this Actually, is how you it, need to it's a it's a constant. It it doesn't stop. If I'm outside and if I'm inside somewhere, it's well, it's a constant thing. It what doesn't is it? Have let you up. been to a have you been to an ear nose throat doctor to have it evaluated? Yeah, I went to a the doctor. They said my ears are fine. So they checked your so, actual hearing, right? I mean your hearing is fine. I didn't go to an audio or just about the the hearing itself, but because, I did go to a doctor. Well, and they were, one of the most, they were one of the most common they, causes of ringing in the ears physically is early hearing loss. So oh, you wow. probably need to get your ears, your hearing checked also. Just go to an audiologist. But on the spiritual uh, aspects okay. of it, I will let Eric take over. Yeah, on the spiritual aspect of it, he's a couple things he's saying. You can literally just ask your guides and spirit to turn it down, meaning um, when you are perceiving, because I can totally relate when you say it's constant, I am someone mm. who I cannot stand silence because I always hear like a hum or like a ring, uh, a certain tone if it's silent, and, and I can't stand that. Like awesome. If I have a fan going, I can hear spirit much clearly, which is strange, but anyway, um, if I, I mean, I can hear them all the time, but what you need to do, he says, is um, 
to make it known what you want. If you want it to stop, then you need to say, you know, state your intentions, like turn it down. Because he's literally showing his fingers turning down the dial. Because I will do the opposite. When I want to hear spirit, I do the same symbol. I'm like, turn it up. I can't hear you. Or turn it down. It's way too loud. Because then I think what's happening is you're so attuned to that vibration that um, when, like, when it's silent or when there's no other sound, it's like that probably becomes deafening or um, there's discomfort associated with it. Mm. So you need to ask Gosh. for either to stop or to turn it down because sometimes you're naturally attuned to, to a higher vibration of, um, and this is where we could go into a whole other topic, like the universal oneness. Like that has its own hum or vibration wow. frequency. And mm. if you're naturally just hearing it, which a lot of people do, um, on a constant basis, then you can shift your hearing because it seems like you're hypersensitive to hearing that. When you're hypersensitive, that's when you become clairaudient. Um, because it's not a hearing, you're not hearing things of this physical realm. It's beyond, like, you know what I mean? It's beyond, like, the, the hard, tangible things you can put your hands on. It's a hearing beyond that, and it's very hypersensitive. And then when you have sounds of this earth that happen, um, they almost seem heightened as well. So, mm. would there is there a way to maybe bring it in clearer, or I don't I don't know more a conversation in clearer then or no? There is. He says he says you have to state your intentions first if that's what you want or if you want to. Yeah, tell him. Like, crank it up so I can really understand what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah because they're you, really they're really, they really drive you crazy if that's what that is. Well, it's, it's I mean, and it, right, and it's when it's like um, uh, turning a dial on a radio station, and you hear static, and then sometimes you might you might make a great connection for a split second, and it's really loud, and then you keep going, you know, and then when you finally hit the nail on the head, the station comes in really clear. But when it doesn't, you have that constant like static and noise. So it's the same concept. Like we we're all channels, and we're all just you know, trying to make that divine connection, so to speak. So um, that's up to you to state your intentions. If that's what you want, then um, yeah, you know, say crank it down things. or make make it more clear so I can understand what the heck you're talking about. I hope that I hope yeah, that helps you, it, Ed. It, it really you drives you crazy. Yeah. Okay. That, 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 that was a big help. Thank you very much. You're we welcome. will try something. Okay, Thank you, babe. Mrs. Mendes. Bye, Ed. Thank you, Mrs. Babcock. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. You guys Thank have a good night. God bless. You too. Gosh, I understand what he must be going through. God. I know. All right, let's There's talk so to you. so much that I would oh, just I, love I, to get into. Oh, did I? Did I? Pardon me? So there's so much I would love to get into with him and, and talking about that. So maybe, well, maybe I can... he'll make an appointment. Maybe he'll book a session. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're talking to somebody from the 813 area code. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, could you hear me? Yes, yes hear you. Thank, you for, thank you for being so patient. What's your first name? Uh, my first name is Sheldon Kaufman. Sheldon, Hi. Um, I send you emails um, all the time, at least oh, uh, I'm yeah. from Florida. Oh, Kaufman, yes. Oh, I shouldn't say your last name, but go ahead and tell us what you oh, got there. Oh, that's all right. I don't care. Um, oh, that's so cool. I'm uh, able to get through. I'm glad to meet you, uh, Miss Badcock. You too. Um, well, your gift is amazing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Everything that you do is it's amazing. It's not a gift. Both it's an ability. I always tell people that it's not a gift. It's an ability. <laughs> true, true. So, Sheldon, what you got for Eric? Oh, okay, Eric. Um, I just had um, pretty much a simple question. I'm kind of, like, stuck in the mud right now. I don't know where to go, like, with my um, with like my career, my direction. Um, I don't know um, exactly where to go from here, like, and, I, and that's pretty much my question. Like, where, where do I go from here, Eric? That's a um, good one. So career. many of us are stuck. You know, we don't know how to push forward. So, yes, that's a really good question. What do you got for him, Eric? Ah, oh, this is 
funny. See, Eric comes in with passion, and he's changing, so my ear's ringing. <laughs> so go figure. Oh, no. Um, just because his energy gets really strong. Um, let me ask you this, Sheldon. I think this is going to be maybe left field for you. I'm not sure, but for Eric to hone in so specifically surprises me because in the way that I've seen Eric, he would prefer not to say this is what you should do because he would rather get you thinking in a way that makes you go, oh, yeah, this is what I'm going to do because he would rather right, empower right. you than tell you what to do. But he's actually mm-hmm. honing in so specifically that I'm, I'm like, shocked. So um, let me ask you this, Sheldon. What's your experience, <laughs> if any, with, like, photography? Um, because he went – right to it like all he would show me all he's saying is a camera and i said so you suggesting photography and and creative leverage in that respect and he won't show me anything else so i don't know if you have any experience at all with photography but he shows you being very it could be anything he could be a videographer he could be a cameraman for tv i mean that that cinematographer photographer huge uh, you know array of possibilities yeah, I've been. Says, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're okay. I was just go ahead, saying, Sheldon. I've, um, I've been, you know, yeah, very interested in, um, and like taking pictures and stuff, and just amazed how, how you know, you can just get an exact image on a pish, uh, picture, and you can look at it years later, and it just brings back, you know, all everything you experienced at that moment, smells and, and. Everything. I think pictures are amazing, definitely. But I've never really had experience in it. You know, I just I, I didn't know what to do in in um, in um, high school. So I tried engineering, but then I just couldn't do the math. You know, so then I went to nursing. Yeah. Oh. And I, I'm not sure if you know that's the way to go. You know and. This is his suggestion. He's showing you just taking a look at just kind of exploring it, you know, exploring the industry of photography, um, exploring the industry, the curriculum, um, the different avenues of it, because I think for you, and if he says if he were to even, again, I'm so surprised how specific he's being, but I just I just I'm amazed. He doesn't, he doesn't do this very often. But, um, yeah, he must feel very strong about it. He's saying, like, he says that you're going to gravitate more towards, like, uh, photography of, um, if you do go into this, photography of, like, the environment, like um, n- nature, not people, um, nothing like, you know, uh, creating portfolios for people or anything like that. I think it's going to be more about nature and capturing nature's beauty. So um, maybe just look at, you know, just kind of, Dabble around with that industry and look into it, and just see. Yeah, and look at look into uh, uh, community college courses in photography, too. If if you right. don't feel like you have enough experience. Definitely, right, that makes sense good. because because um, you know, like uh, ever since I started do, uh, reading the blog, I, like my whole life has changed, my my spirituality and stuff, and and I've been more interested in. Um, and you know, like nature, and and I, now I know everything has a soul. You know, with with my yeah. brain on um, on on being Baptist. You know, they're like, oh no, only humans have souls, nothing else. You know, and I just I just couldn't believe that. I'm like, I know everything has a soul. Plants, everything. The earth. Yeah. So I think I wouldn't be surprised if you begin to capture something through you know through photography. You know more than just what the eye can see. So that yeah. passion. What, what you is were that? Just what saying, is that like photography? Uh, it, there's a, there's there's a type of photography that can capture the soul or something like that. Alien or I yeah. can't remember the name of it, but uh, there, there's some sort of photography that can capture the soul of things. Right. Really? Right. Or am I just imagining? No, you're right. The energy field, the aura. Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you begin to become, you know, keep keep in, in tune with that passion of your spiritual side of things. You know, everything has consciousness, everything has life force in it. So now maybe try to capture that through photography and bring a whole new life to, you know, to your beliefs in that way. Oh, Sheldon, so, I'm excited for you. Okay. That's awesome. I hope that helps. 
Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's so awesome. Um, I appreciate this opportunity so much, being able to talk to Eric, to you, and to Ms., to you, Kim, too. You're welcome. Thank you You're so welcome. much. It's a pleasure, and I hope I hope it just gives you a little incentive to, you know, no matter what, stay connected to your passion. Explore. And you right. are entitled to, to do and create in this life whatever you feel passionate about. So this is exactly. the sky's the limit, honestly. Exactly. Thought creates manifestation. Oh. Yes, you're Sheldon. right. You're right. So Thanks good luck, Sheldon. In. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Keep me posted, okay? Let me know oh, what, what happens. You, you right, know, awesome. I'll email you. <laughs> All okay, right. Thank you. Bye. 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 That's awesome. Okay, we have one from the seven. Five seven area code. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Hello. Who am I Hi. talking with? My name's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. How are you? What you got for us? Hi, our, Lisa. What you got Hi, for Kim. Our Hi, name? Eric. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Thank you so much. I have a question. I'm at a crossroads right now with my marriage and my finances. I have a son that's on drugs and an adult autistic son. And I just want to know if Eric has any advice on where I should focus on my future so it could be positive for all of us. Mm. Sure. Okay. Um, First of all, he greets you. He puts his hands on his hips, and he's like, what's up, lady? And he shakes his hips. So for some reason, he takes, like, a real (laughs) sassy approach with you. Pretty funny. Um, You're going to – he shows you – um, making a move, you're definitely going to, but that's like, that's old news, he says. Like, I think that you, you either have known this in your heart for a while that you're going to move, um, or you feel it, you've known it for a while. But he shows you moving, um, and it's interesting because I feel like, um, I don't know how many children you have, but I definitely feel like Two. one one stays with you, one stays very, very close to you, and then I feel like the other one's back and forth between, um, like, mom and dad or maybe lives on his own, his or her own or something. But Mm -hmm. I feel like one stays close to you and the other one's kind of back and forth. Um, But I think, you know, for you financially, he says, he doesn't give a whole lot of information about your finances and, like, what to do, so to speak. Mm Because he kind of shrugs his shoulders and he's like, there's really nothing to do. Like, I think everything's already set, so don't overlook or don't overthink it, rather. Like, don't overthink, okay. like, how am I going to, you know, come up with the funds for this, or how's money going to well, work? Well, that's What's important, that though, like? Eric. you got to give her more than that. Come on. Seriously. He's, he's saying, like, he's saying that it's, it's already set, like, it's already there. So I think what he's okay. saying to you is if you are thinking to yourself or if you've been questioning and pondering, like, where's the money going to come from? Am I going to have enough? He's saying, like, not to worry about it because it's already going to be there. It's already... Um, oh, okay. It's already there. Like he keeps saying, like it's it's done. It's said. It's spoken for, sort of, so to speak. Like it's already there. It's already. Um, it's nothing to worry about. So. Good. Um, yeah, he's actually showing it increasing, like uh, money increase. Ooh. So we'll, when we really <laughs> wow. into it, I think you're gonna. Well, make where would that this. increase come from? Where would that increase come from? That's what he's talking about. He said that she, you're going to make changes, Lisa, in your life that increase, um, like, income, money, finances. So, one, I think mm-hmm. it's the living arrangements, living situation. So I wouldn't be surprised if you go into something that's, if, like, if you move, if you go into something that's a little more comfortable for you mm-hmm. physically and financially, like, to manage mm-hmm. physically and financially. Mm-hmm. Um, so that alleviates some of the burden some of the responsibility. Mm-hmm. But I it's funny because he shows you getting into, like, um, these little side things. Like, you know how people will have, like, their own little shops on Etsy or um, mm. people become mm-hmm. consultants for, like, um, like up here in Ohio, people have, there's this weird craze of, like, these LuLaRue, and the only thing that I've figured out is, like, LuLaRue has leggings. So I don't know if it's, like, mm-hmm. a clothing brand but then, like, now all my friends are becoming, like, LuLaRue consultants, and they're selling it. And then there's, like, this ah. thing called um, Healthies or something like Healthy. God, what is it called? 
But but then, like, people become consultants, so it's almost like, you know, they work for themselves. Or if you sell, like, doTERRA oil, that's an example. So I see you doing a lot of, like, little stuff like that, too, on the side, where you become more in tune with, um, uh, like, uh, like, this is what I really love, and I like it so much I'm going to make a small business out of it. Um, oh. So just using oils, like, as an example, just an example. Mm-hmm. Um, like, oh, I love my essential oils so much I'm going to start selling them, you know, that kind of thing. So that's mm-hmm. where, like, the extra money comes in. But it seems easy. It seems very flexible and leisurely. Like, that's a very, very strong mm. vibe he's um, associating so with So not it. stressful. So, Right. No, I think it's going to be more like um, you're in control of it rather it be in control of you and your schedule. No. No. What about the sun on drugs? What What, what about your the sun on drugs? How yes. can we help that situation? Yes. Sure. Can you, can you give his first name, Lisa? If not, that's okay. Yes. Evan. Evan. Okay. Evan. Um, Evan's at a place right now where... Um, two things Eric says he's going to point out. Um, he does what he wants, so it's going to be really hard to get through to him. But mm-hmm. I also think that he's very, um, I think that he's also very much in this place where he's he's wanting out or he's wanting to make a change, make a move. So he doesn't like the way he is or the things that he's doing, and he wants to make it different, but he's not sure. It's like he's... he's um, discouraged before he even begins the effort to make a change. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Part of that, I think, is like, I think that he, oh, this is interesting. Eric said this is common with addicts. So I don't know, Lisa, if, e, Lisa, if you have any experience with this, but um, if, like, knowing this, like, as a doctor, but he says that addicts generally think they have that, like, persona to upkeep now. Like, well, my whole family thinks I'm this now, so now I'm just going to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Uh, uh-huh. Like, mm-hmm. So of I course, think that's yeah. part of his, his struggle, too. Like, I'm ready to change, but he has to be, he has to say yes to himself and allow himself that space to change. Mm-hmm. And, and also letting go of, like, you know, what's everybody else going to think when I start cleaning up? Or you know, mm-hmm. look different because I'm healthy or well. So um, well, what I think she wants to change. What can be done? Yeah, this is what Eric's saying. Like he he wants to change, um, but he's afraid of like letting people in because I don't think that family or friends know the severity of his um, his abuse or his like mental dependency on it. I don't know if that's a good way to put it, but mm-hmm. um, Eric says that. As always, he's like, I'm going to tell every person this that has an addict as a friend or a family. The first thing you can do is validate them, acknowledge who they are and what they're going through. Okay. And and build a rapport through that validation and acknowledgement. Because if you always are going in, like, trying to change them, they're always going to feel attacked, and they're always going to Mm -hmm. retaliate or or sort of, like, be combative, either Mm -hmm. emotionally, verbally, physically, you know, so, so just validate where he is. You know, if he's if he's struggling, or if he even says to you he likes his addiction, whatever. Say, okay, I hear you. I understand. I know that this is who you are. So, because that you have to you have to start somewhere that is mm-hmm. common. You have to find a common ground with him. So acknowledge where he is. Validate where he is before you try to help him change and shift that. Because okay. when you acknowledge him, you give him space to create that change or to allow that change. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. Eric says, like, when, when people always come in and try to tell you what to do or change, like if you're an addict or if you, you know, you use drugs or something, you feel attacked. So you're going to... Mm-hmm. You're gonna, yeah, you um, feel retaliate. judged. You feel judged, of course. Yeah. So mm-hmm. then you do it even more, he says, because then you feel like, you know, that's the only way they know you, so you have to keep up that persona almost. So validate them first. And that's the problem okay. with America, he says, is we always say, this is how you need to change. This is what you have to do. And it's like, mm-hmm. but I just want to be heard right now. I just want to be heard for what I'm feeling and what I'm going through, and then I'll change. But just hear me out, speaking from, like, the um, addict's point of view. Mm-hmm. Great. I hope that helps. What about marriage? It does. Marriage, does he see that continuing or ending? Um, 
He says that you already know the answer to this, that this is something that has been dissolving for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, he just kind of shows you you are changing. You're, you're pulling into and moving into new space, and I think you're seeking independence. And so mm-hmm. he says that you've already felt it dissolving, like the soul-to-soul sharing. You've already felt that dissolve for a while now. So Okay. Okay, guys, we, now need, to, we kind of need to wrap it up. Because, well, thank you. That because helped me so much, you guys. I hope You're so. Welcome. All right, Lisa, thank you. And thank yes, you, everybody. Me. I want you guys to visit uh, Kim's site at www.kimbabcock.net. And check out the blog www.channelingeric.com and Eric spelled with a K. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. We enjoyed you guys being a part of the audience. I enjoyed the questions from the listeners. I think we all learned so much from them. Any last words? Well, that sounds terrible, but any last words, Ken? <laughs> oh, definitely. I will say, you guys, my website is going to be overhauled soon, so keep an eye out for that. If it's down and not functioning, I apologize, but it shouldn't be down. But um, feel free to go go check it out whenever you have time. And check out the blog, channelingeric.com, Eric spelled with a K. And you guys are going to find so much helpful information there. So please um, take time to check it out and share it with the people that you know it can help in your lives too. So thank you guys so much for listening. We enjoy doing Thanks, this everybody. every Thursday night. Bye-bye. Thank you. I love you, Eric. Thank you so much, Kim. Love you guys. Love you, Mom, he says. Good night. Okay. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. Before you lies a beautiful meadow. In that meadow, Progressive Direct has placed its auto insurance rates alongside those of competitors. You select the lowest rate and feel a great sense of calm. A great sense of Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates so you can rest easy. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Progressive brings you flow with Flow. When Flow flows, she flows in the know. Mind ruminates the rates. Shown them all, I heed the call. Seeing the rest, I choose the best. Sometimes it's ours, sometimes it's not. When the fox walks, is it called a fox trot? That's a real question. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.